Hello, we're going to learn today how to use a JK flip-flop. Okay, that is the one we have here with this green sign on. And before that, we're going to check, I want to check the, the flip-flop we used last week. Do you remember? It is the reset set flip-flop. We could build this flip-flop with just two uh, not end gates. This would be the reset and that will be the set uh, inputs. This R and S are the inputs. We have two outputs that maybe could be just a, a bulb or something like that. Just two bulbs. So one of the bulbs is connected just to this not end gate and the other one should be connected to the other one. But the other gate we have here should be connected to this output. So the output of the first gate is connected to the input of the other one. So let's do the same with the other one. The output for the re the reset, the set output is connected with the reset input. Uh, we checked last week that when we have something like a zero here, usually we have a, with the reset, we have something here and we have the opposite in this uh, in bulb or this output. Okay, so we checked that, that, that uh, flip-flop last week. So today we are going to use the JK flip-flop that is similar to that one, but for doing something different that is a counter. And we want to count in, in digital and convert into decimal with the BCD7 segments, the display we are going to use also in this experiment. So let's go a little bit down, yeah. So we will have two inputs in this flip-flop, one input is J and the other one is K, but we also have a clock sign of, what does it mean? Does it mean? It means that, well, only well the level of the clock is high, it's a one, we can just have a one or a zero, high level or low level in the clock, only well the clock is a one, it's a high level, the inputs can go into the circuit, okay? So we are going to get something different in the output, it's okay? So only when we have a one in the clock, we can introduce the high level we have in the input. And well, we, we need high level just through the counter, not always. So it depends on the clock, we are going to introduce something and to change something in the output. So yes, Q, this should be the output we want to use, and that will be this next output. If I introduce a two zeros, J and K zeros, then we will stay with zero in the next output. Now you remember that the output, this one, is going to introduce again with the input. So it says something. Well, when we have a Q here, it nothing changed. The both inputs are, are at zero, low level. So we will have also, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> we, uh, where is the eraser? Yeah, the eraser. We'll have the same level that we have here. Okay, so we have, as the reset said, we have two inputs and the, the, the word difference. So when we have this input to one, we will stay with zero. When we have this input to one, we'll change it to zero, okay? So the K is going to be as a reset. It's similar to reset. Okay, what happens when we just activate the J input to high level? Well, well it, it does in the, in the opposite way. So we will have one here, and we will stay with the one in this case. And here we have this, last two inputs that it was improvement from the reset set when we use the reset and set and we introduce both inputs to high level okay let's just leave that one okay when we have a one here and also one here we don't know what to have in both outputs it was an indetermination so we, we don't we don't know what happens in the output, and it's impossible to know. So in the JK, we, we have something different, and we just change what we have. So if I have a zero in the previous output, 
we will have a one in the next one it will have a one in the output we will have we will have a zero in the next output and it's an improvement okay so let's use this circuit we have here seven four seven three and let's see what happens we, we have two different uh, two different JK's flip-flops okay we have two the here we have one of the inputs okay and this is the other input we have so we're going to establish this inputs to high level to one okay yeah uh, let's we will see how to do that okay then we also have uh, two inputs for a second a flip-flop we are going to use it to, we can use several flip-flops and we are going to set it to one. So it depends on the clock that the signal enters into the flip-flop. So we have here two clocks, okay? So can we check the clock signal we have here? Well, the clock signal we have here, we have also here, these are clocks, CLK is better, no? C L K, okay. Those are the clocks, and we're going to connect these clocks, these two clocks, to uh, our switch. So we're going to connect this, something like this. That is a switch. That's just a push button or something like that. So then we have also to connect the high level five volts, and this is five volts. And we have also ground here that is zero volts. And then we will have the uh, outputs. Okay, let's mark the outputs with the different color. That would be one output, and that would be the other output, the output for the first uh, flip flop, and this would be the output for the second flip flop. Okay, so, well, let's just do a quickly drawing of how to connect these this two, two flip-flops, okay? Let's see that, yeah, okay. So we have two flip-flops, just represent the flip-flops as the box. We have J and K, and we have one output we want to use, and it's Q, and we also have another flip-flop. Oops. Both inputs, J and K, and the output we want to use on this Q. Okay, and then we also want to use the signal clock that we are going to represent this way. Yes, this is one, this is zero volts, and this is the clock, the clock signal. And the clock signal is going to enter in this flip flop. Okay. So how to use it as a counter? Let's see the connections with the green color. Yeah, so we're going to connect J and K with the same wire to 5 volts. That means to high level. So when we have J and K to high level, what happens? The Q is going to change from 0 to 1 and from 1 to 0. Okay, so we're going to have two outputs that is being UPA. Output 1, no out. Output one again is not possible it's because I, I can see and uh, okay I out one I will not have for the other one out two so we want to connect the output here yeah so when I press the clock it goes to enter both into the one so it changes if we have a uh, Zero here, it changes to one. If we have a one here, it changes to zero. Okay, yeah, that's what it happens when I press the clock. Okay, okay. So and um, we are going to use this output to enter into the second clock. Okay, we have here the clock. C L K, and this is the C L K for the first one. Clock. And what happens with the both inputs is the same that the other ones. We're going to connect these two inputs to five volts. And that would be our second output. Yeah. So when I introduce a 
one. If, if we start with a zero here and I introduce the signal clock, it changes to one, so we have a one here. That so we'll introduce the number here. If we have a zero here, it will change to a one. Then the next step will be well, we have a one here, so it will change will change to zero. So what happens? We don't introduce anything here until it gets to the next one. And that is the way to count. Okay, so let's see now the, the schematics of this experiment. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's go now with the the chart, all the, all the schematics we have for this experiment. So we have fused already this part, you know, the decoder. We have also used this uh, BCD 77 display, yeah. And it's the same, the same condition we have for the previous one. Do you remember how to use it? Yeah, we just can introduce numbers. Number one, well, I, I can introduce two, uh, from two different parts, the, the signal here, so it will break. So, but it doesn't really matter this right part. Okay, so I introduce the two, and number three, I can introduce number whatever. Okay, yes, with these inputs. Okay, yes, the, with the switches. So we have this part, we have also used it. So let's be sure that all the are the to low level, all the inputs. Let's stop it and we check. We're going to check this other part. I'm going to show you how to use it. We have just the the press button just to use the clock signal. Uh, well, it should be to one. And we can count just one, two, three, oh, zero. Because I only have two bits. So I can only count to one from zero to three. Yeah, okay. We can just add more uh, circuits circuits like this, more into the circuits. If I introduce a number and just uh, press this button, this switch, just it's going to reset, set again, and get, I can count again. Okay, that's the way it works. Okay, let's explain a little bit how the connection are, okay? So let's see. This is the integrated circuit we want to use. And let's check the connections we have, yes. Well, it's in Spanish, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> yeah. We have, yes, this is ground. Can you see it's connected with a black wire to ground? Yeah. And in the other the other side, we have power that is VCC that is connected to five volts. Okay. Then we have K1 and J2. They are going to, we are going to connect it to positive and also the other Inputs K2, uh, well, I can see the other one, but this that one, okay? Yeah, so we have all the red wires we have here, one, two, three, and four are the inputs. Yeah, we have just seen the, the schematic explanation before. Okay, then we have the uh, salida invertida is the Q, not Q, okay, for the first gate. We are not using that one, and we are not using the other one. What is uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, what is it? Okay, here uh, the salida invertida box is the Q, the not Q for the second gate, for the second flip flop. Yeah. So we also have the signal clock. That is this brown wire we have here. We have this signal clock here. Okay. Yeah. And this signal clock have to go also to this part. So we have connected both clock one and clock two are connected together. Then we have the reestablish as how to reset everything. That is this gray connection. One is here for the first uh, flip flop and for the second flip flop is here. Okay, okay. And then, uh, where, we are almost done. So we have also two outputs we want to use. This is the first output. Yeah, is this yellow wire we have here that is connected to the first input of our decoder. So we will introduce zero or a one. Yeah, is the first one. 
And then we have the second output, that is this orange wire, and is connected to the second input of the decoder that will introduce the second digit that will create the two or the three in the BCD seven segments. Okay, as you can see, as you can see, we have also a yellow wire here that is going for the first output to the clock. Okay, so we have here the clock. Well, you can see it, but it's here the clock, yeah. So this is the connection we have showed you. We have, um, uh, we have seen before in the in the um, first part of this video. Okay, so you can try uh, and let's see what happens. 